Hey everybody, welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Music Podcast with your host, Jordan. <laughs> and Keith. And Keith, yeah. <laughs> Keith and Jordan. So. All right. Yes, yes. God, I, I'm so glad Another that everyone's episode. here. I don't know if you guys realize, <laughs> but this is episode two. And you know what? We have a little special tradition here. On episode two, we start our intro off exactly how we just did. So everyone, if you've noticed the change, I hope you enjoyed it. Episode three, maybe even fresher. In the meantime, <laughs> welcome in. But I don't think we're from the slums of Barcelona today. I'm not no, sure where we're from not. today. It might be uh, the slums of Portugal. I'm not sure. Just a regular recording studio. It doesn't have to always be a big dramatic flair, Keith. Huh? Oh, whatever, dude. Right. Oh, okay. Oh, so when you do it, it's fine. I whatever, think. dude. <laughs> You're going to so make today, me say it. So today's, so today's music review is David Bowie's uh, last album, at least so far, Black Star. Great record. And Kendrick Lamar's untitled unmastered so and they actually there's like a correlation between the two and we'll get to that in today's podcast so starting off david bowie released this record uh black star and it's a great record he died shortly after his 69th birthday this january so rest in peace mr bowie uh that was one of the first uh deaths in music t- to rock the world Oof. Um, yeah, David Bowie was a visionary and a pioneer in rock and roll music. He, Maybe one of the first deaths in music this year to rock the world. Yeah, that's what I said. You Oh, I thought you said just in general. No, you weren't listening. <laughs> I, I'm so sorry. I misheard you. That's okay. Don't worry. We'll edit this out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what am I going to do with you, dude? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so as I was saying, you know, I was just, dude, I'm going to hurt you. <laughs> On, on the ball, Keith. David Bowie, show some respect. Yeah, so David Bowie, uh, um, like I said, total visionary. Uh, he got his start basically late 60s, up, but he didn't hit his peak in his stride into the 70s uh, with space odyssey and fashion and fame. So David Bowie was one of those few rock and roll artists, uh, artists that transcended for everyone in American culture. Everybody knew who he was. If you're like from Generation X or a baby boomer, you knew who he was. And Black Star is a fitting farewell album. It's a great record. Uh, It's Bowie at his finest. Now, reading about Black Star right before it came out and after it came out, he cited uh, through his uh, musical producer and friend, Tony Visconti, that he had been influenced by Kendrick Lamar when making the record. So I'm thinking, okay, well, Bowie's cool. And he would say something like that. But is it true? And then I listened to the record, and yeah, I totally see it. This record's great. First of all, the song Black Star was the first single and first video from the record. Great song. He, uh, What I like about the song, besides the sonic quality of it, it's that it's not a three-minute and 30-second song for radio. So yeah, radio's probably not going to play this song because it's over seven minutes long. It's, very, it's nine minutes and 57 seconds long. It's beautiful. Very old school. I love that. You know, people get so concerned with, oh, I have to have a song that has to be four minutes or or, or shorter so the radio will play it. Don't always be so concerned with that. Just make good music. Just let it ride. If it feels good, it feels good. If it feels good after five minutes, let it go. If it feels good after three minutes, that's fine too. But don't don't get in that that mind frame that it has to be under four minutes. That's a pet peeve. I don't don't like that. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) So... But, yeah, lyrically speaking, it's like David Bowie, with this record, he, like, wrote lyrics that are hip-hop oriented, and I can actually hear, like, Kendrick Lamar writing some of these lyrics or actually rapping these lyrics, but he did it. So, Bowie has these lyrics that have a hip-hop feel to them, but with his rock and roll aesthetic. And I'll show you what I mean. We talk about lyrics, like, from um, Dollar Days and let's see the girl loves me so i'm gonna have jordan read some of the lyrics from the girl loves me yeah okay um we've got um making all the omies mad keep reading uh thursday popo blind to the poly and the hole by the friday what were the <laughs> what were the <laughs> uh did monday go i'm cold <laughs> to this pig and pug show so 
Sounds like Kendrick, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I I see what you mean. Like, there's definitely influence there. Yeah. I think that you, you're... But it's still um, done with the Bowie aesthetic. It's brilliant. I think you were talking about overall that you were just kind of blown away with this album, right? It's, I mean, from track to track, you just really loved it. Right. But, I mean, are there any more lyrics for you to read from that song? No, I, yeah. I, I was making a point with that. Okay. I'm sitting in the chestnut tree. Who the uh, F's going to mess with me? Girl loves me. Hey, China. Girl loves me. Yeah, I mean, that's Bowie. I mean, I mean, but if I read that to you and not say David Bowie, you would think that was some rapper that you loved or hated. So I love that a rock and roll pioneer is open-minded because you have other rock and roll people who uh, have a, 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 a open disdain for hip-hop, possibly because they don't understand it, they can't assimilate it, they can't emulate it. I don't know what the reasons are, so they just dismiss it. But I like that Bowie was always open-minded, and I believe that he understood that hip-hop has become the new rock and roll for to, for America today. So I, I see what you mean, and I definitely think that um, Bowie is someone who... You, know, you have people like... Uh, you heard about the whole Rock and Roll Hall of Fame where you know the Kiss was... Yeah, Gene Simmons, Gene Simmons. Had a, he had a problem yeah. with the whole yeah. hip hop being included. Yes, thing. yes. I, I, you don't think I don't think I could ever see that with Bowie. And right, right. I think that's just part of the you know that's part of the magic because he is someone that you right. feel is like all accepting, just right, right. very wise. Well, I, yeah, and, and when you, he's you know, a mythical creature. I think. Well, exactly. And then when you hear this record, it has that like a progressive rock, indie rock, alternative rock feel to it. It's modern rock. This guy's almost 70 years old, still pushing the envelope. What people love about Bowie is that he pushed the envelope, that he always tried to do something different. But then I think that sometimes that worked against him because people were so stuck on, you know, space oddity, you know, ground control and major time and fashion and fame and low in his early albums that by the time he did stuff like let's dance some people were like oh that's his pop sellout record i don't like it no bowie had to challenge himself that's what he did he was one of those rare few rock and roll artists that got better the older he he, he got yeah. he got better he aged very gracefully very well you know and that's rare for rock stars <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, but your your overall opinion on the album, you, you kind of think it's, I mean, it's, uh, what would you say, just great, just all around. Like It's um, a great record, yeah. I mean, there's, there's, I mean, there's... What's the first word that comes to mind to you whenever you think, you know, you're talking about it? Well, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's a great bittersweet record because... I mean, it may be his last record. We're not quite sure. There might be more to come. I mean, he made this record knowing that he was dying. I mean, and... And I, I think that shows, in my opinion, I mean, um, really what really gets me is uh, the, it feels somber. The entire time, There's it feels like melancholy. And I don't, and I don't think, I'm not really sure if I feel that way because I know, you know, Bowie's death was there. And it kind of just it shook things up a little bit, but I couldn't listen to the album for the longest time because I knew I was gonna, you know, I wasn't gonna handle it well. I was gonna be emotional. I really did love Bowie, and for you know months I went by without hearing it because I knew that that's gonna kill me too. So when I did listen to it, exactly what I thought was gonna happen happened. I, I was very upset, but I, I couldn't. I can't deny it. it's an amazing album. It really is. It's a masterpiece. But I agree. It, it does. It feels very sad because. It does feel like a goodbye, and that and that's hard to shake off. And you get that feeling when you listen to the last track. I can't give everything away. Honestly, I, mean, I also felt that on the uh, first track, the Black Star, as well. Okay, yeah. that was something. Uh, if yeah. almost I, as I listen to it, it's, it feels like a nine minutes long a funeral dirge because it's just huh. it just it's so instrumental and it. it's so. Huh. It's complex and it's beautiful, but yeah. I think that's the beauty. I think if David Bowie was still alive, it would just be plain beautiful, just something that's inspiring. But at this oh, point, yeah. it, it's it's it, it's kind of sad. It, it's sad, but in, in a good way. It's it's the sad that you want to listen to. Bittersweet, as I said before. Bittersweet. There yeah. we go. So I mean, it's a in bittersweet this lyrics, symphony. <laughs> Different group, bro. But <laughs> go Dollar Days. Um, yeah. we, we have some of the lyrics from that song too. That. You know, I wanted you to. Uh, well, um, Dollar Days with uh, Cash Girls uh, Suffer Me. I've got no enemies. I'm walking down. It's nothing to me. It's nothing to see. If I'll ever see the English Evergreens, I'm running to. It's nothing to me. It's nothing to see. So. Yeah. 
So, I mean, hip hop again, you know, I hear that Kendrick influence. I hear David liking rap music and wanted to infuse that with his music because he wants to do something new and he just made it great. And I, I can't give everything away. He definitely does say goodbye. But it, I mean, it, I felt like he was saying goodbye even then. I mean, right. I, you heard the lyrics I was just saying that was literally almost a goodbye. That song, yeah, yeah. That song yeah. ends with I, I'm trying to, I'm dying to, I'm trying to. It's yeah, yeah. yeah ever that's the whole entire album just reeks of this just this uh, feeling that I just can't listen to it. I, I really can't listen to it unless I'm very prepared. But I think that just goes to show how great Bowie is. I agree. But yeah, with uh, with all that said, um, we'll be back with this break. It's going to be a great commercial break. Just have time to just reflect on everything we said, and when we come back, we'll be doing Kendrick Lamar's Untitled. Yes, and a little bit more about Bowie, but yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's a given. Right on. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines. They got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. So just wrap Bowie up uh, real quick. It's a uh, we both agree it's, it's a great album. You should pick it up. Great album. Yeah. Um, it, it's you know it's like I said it's it's bittersweet. It's sad, but it's still great. It's just good to hear him, and it, it's it's so meaningful that he wanted his fans to have something of him. And this video, Lazarus, you know the video starts off with him in bed with a blindfold on and he's singing. That was probably our first clue, or should have been. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, but yeah, it, it's a, it's a must have. Um, it's a must-have, so pick it up. If you've never heard Bowie before, buy it. If you're already a Bowie fan, buy it. Either way it goes, just buy it, definitely. Just buy it, yeah. Good words <laughs> to live by. Yes. Okay, guys, so our next album is going to be, of course, the Kendrick Lamar album, Untitled and Unmastered. Yes. Now hold for applause. <laughs> there we go. So I, I think you already think it's a good thing from the way you clapped enthusiastically, right? This is yeah, it's a great album. I like it. It's, it's an it's, amazing album, right? Yeah, it's it's a trip. I mean, I, I've never seen an artist uh, put out a record where there's no title to it. <laughs> it's actually untitled, unmastered. Huh? The, all of the the songs were songs that have already been made before, and some of them were already heard through maybe like a live show or so. So they were okay. literally untitled at that time. So okay, right on. He, I guess he just kind of transferred on, and um, I think I think it's cool. It, it's great that. There's there's no flashy in the album. There's no flashy, you know, logo, like song title. It's all just untitled. It's all they're all at an equal grounds and they're all amazing. I couldn't tell you what my favorite song is if we were talking by a water cooler because I'd have to say, <laughs> oh, it's the one that goes a little bit like the da 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 da. You know, like uh -huh. I, I have to sound like a grandpa for it. I can't say un I love Untitled Three almost as much as I love Untitled Seven. <laughs> And so it's you just, can't go like, oh, track two is my jam. And, yeah, no. oh, and track three, oh my god. It, yeah, it sounds bro. like you're uh, talking about a mixtape somebody made you right? in the eighties. So. I mean, that's yeah. He's kind of put the, put us in that kind of uh, corner <laughs> in that regard. But but, uh, oh no, go on. I was just about to compliment him again, but then again, I just I really loved this album. I I mean, I had no complaints from track one, untitled one all the way to you know untitled eight. It was just. It was like quality in every album. Yeah, it, it flows smoothly. It's it has a very organic feel, and it seems like you said that some of it was recorded live from different uh, TV appearances. Yeah, and some of it seems to be recorded during the Tempempa Butterfly sessions. So it has that same organic quality to the production. That like he had a uh, like a nice bomb, just a bomb, just a great band, just doing it. You know, in the studio, giving you that bomb funk feel to the record. Uh, so like track one is like his. I feel like it's his Barry White impersonation while he's you know having relations with the young lady, <laughs> yeah. and then it goes uh, like there's a track where I, I call it "Get Guy on the Phone," 
I yeah. think that's track, track two. Track two. It's track yeah, two. Yeah, I, I like I that. I don't blame you for not knowing that right off the back. I'm not going to hold you that on this yeah. podcast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I like that track, too. It, that track seems to be about the self-indulgence of mankind and the foolishness that we have. And let's get God on the phone because I see all this craziness going on. Maybe it's time for you to come down and set everything straight. I get that vibe from that song. Yeah. You know? And well, yeah, it's just that, uh, yeah, so I like that. And then track three seems to be like one of your, I think that might be your favorite song. I think that's one of my favorites, yeah. Uh, I call it What Did the Man Say? So we have to name yeah, we have to name the record for ourselves. Maybe that was the whole point of it. I don't know. We're going to submit these names to Kendrick and seeing if when right? the, you know, the second edition of this album comes exactly, out. Exactly, exactly. But yeah, so what, what did you want to say about that track? I think I loved it. I think that I, okay, well, first off, let me say something about Kendrick Lamar. I think that all of his songs have a very deep meaning, and they have a very thought-provoking feeling to them. Okay, okay. I think even whenever he tackles things like living in Compton, it's not just your regular, you know, look how bad I was, look how, you know, the crazy stuff. I mean, yeah, of course he goes through the crazy times, but it felt honest. It felt very honest, and it felt real, and it wasn't just about him being the king. It's about him being vulnerable. It's about him not knowing what to do. And I think that this honesty that he brings into every song, really, what's you know, it's what make Kendrick, it's what makes Kendrick Lamar Kendrick Lamar. You know, it's it's what really kind of makes him stand out. I think one of the many reasons. So what I liked about what did the man say was the fact that I mean, he's kind of approaching kind of the theology, the kind of belief, the, the kind of the workarounds with every you know race that he goes to what did the indian say what did the black man say what did the asian man say what did the white man say yeah it's it's a brilliant song in that capacity because there's no song really like that where he's trying to give you all those different perspectives no uh, and it didn't speaking it, so. it, it didn't there was no hate to it there, i mean no you're, you're talking no. about like ever you know you're talking about all these different races you're you're talking about their ideology you know just yeah yeah just they're they're, they're kind of you know their culture, their their cultural belief, yeah, yeah and yeah. Mm-hmm. he he does a good job of conveying it without without hate. With it, it just it puts an interesting spin. It really does. I, I agree with you. And after listening to you talk just now, it just it just occurred to me that one of his great strengths as an MC, Kendrick, seems to know how to master self reflection and social commentary seamlessly intertwined. Definitely, he uh, definitely does. He does a perfect job of that. So. You know, you always say to me that you think he's a legend in the making, and I, I, I agree with you. I, I agree with you. I, I do think he's a legend in the making, but he's got to keep on going. Uh, at the rate he's going, at this point, he he will get there, because you know, to me, the you know, today's MCs, at least MCs who are commercially speaking, or commercially speaking in in, in hip hop, would be it's it's Kendrick, it's Drake, it's J Cole. Um, you, you could throw in Big Sean, and I would say Odyssey. You know, to me, but Odyssey's not really commercial yet. But those are MCs worth listening to when it comes to rap music. Uh, the four of those people are on the radio for the most part. Odyssey is not, but that's another conversation. But yeah, that's the vanguard for rap music, commercially speaking. And Kendrick is commercially successful, but his music still has that uh, underground credibility to it. Yeah. At the, you know, independent credibility. So he's still with Top Dog, and he's with Aftermath Records, which is Dr. Dre's label. So you know, Compton's firstborn son next to the next to the game. You know, it's like N.W.A. the game and Kendrick Lamar. It's all the same family tree, Compton wise. <laughs> and you you have a lot of people that sing about Compton. You have a lot of people that rap about. You know, just kind of having a hard time growing up, you know? Well, I don't think you have a lot of people singing about Compton. I don't, not a lot of people Compton, singing about but, Compton, but, but you, you know what I'm talking know, about. The uh, list is bigger than Kendrick. And What do you mean? The list of people that rap about Com- uh, Compton is bigger not than really. Kendrick. Not really, no. You think that's a very small, no. selected group? No, not, not today. You had Compton's Most Wanted 10 plus years ago. Hey, yeah. And I, maybe MC8, but no. I mean, when people think of Compton and hip-hop, they think of NWA, The Game, and Kendrick. And that's true. And I'm not saying that the club's so big that, you know, we, we've got over a thousand members now, but no. I'm saying he's not the first person to do it. And I'm, but I am saying but that wasn't the point. <laughs> I, I, what I, yeah, come on, let me finish, Keith. You know, go ahead. Man. There you go. Uh, what are you saying? I was I think that he does it differently. I think that he, he puts a different spin on it. I think that it's not just about living in the hard times. It's him living in those times. You know, it's not t- talking about just how bad things are going where you're growing up. Whether it's Compton or anywhere, everyone's got that, you know, things were hard growing up. 
All right. But he he puts a he does you and you know kind of use that self reflection on it. You know. Yes, he does. I agree. I agree. He has another track, track six. I call it "Can't Explain," and I believe it's featuring CeeLo. It sounds like CeeLo, and uh, that's a nice track. It's like Kendrick is trying to woo this girl, and he likes her a lot, and he knows he's strange, and he knows he's done some crazy things. So he's like, you know, you can like me too. I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm a little crazy, but I'm still good for you. I, wait, I can explain. <laughs> so yeah. I like that track, and I like CeeLo singing the hook on that. So yeah, it's it's a it's a cool record. And then Blue Face is just the last track is so funky. Track eight. It's, very it's funky. just yeah, yeah, just really yeah, it's it's nice. Um I think Blue Faces is a is a symbolic for having the blues. It seems like the, the, the theme to it is that people want money, especially new money, but they don't want to work for it. So they're rock they're walking around with blue faces trying to uh, get to easy street without working hard for it. So that's what I get from that track. But yeah. yeah. I know what you mean, and I agree with you. I, I think that it uh -huh. it's good. It just it speaks miles. But I, I really, you can say that with any Kendrick album, it's he's just continuing to build a legacy. That's I, 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 I said agree. That in the yeah. beginning, I'm going to keep saying it. No, yeah, I think you're right. So we definitely yeah approve yeah buy that record too. It's a great album to have. I think a lot of people didn't know about it or forgot about it because it didn't have a big release. So, but yeah, it's Untitled Unmastered, Kendrick Lamar, worth picking up. Check it out, and we will be back right after this break. And when we come back, we're going to go ahead and just, you know, sum up. We're going to talk about the two albums, what it means, and what you guys should do next. All right. See you soon. Are you looking for help for your fantasy football team? Check out the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Get today's best advice on who to start, who to sit, even who you should draft. From sleeper picks to red-hot lineups, they got it all covered for you. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash fantasy-football-podcast. We'll cover traditional leagues, dynasty, PPR, even IDP leagues. When you need fantasy help, there's just one show to hit up. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. How was that? Was that nice? I thought uh, so too. Yes. Great commercial. <laughs> yeah, <it> sure was. <laughs> so, but yeah. What's going on? We, we're, all right, so we're back and we're here. We're going to wrap up. We're going to talk about Bowie. We're going to talk about Kendrick and really, you know, I, I, what it what it kind of did. We're gonna we're gonna do the sum up. We're gonna do the fun sum up. This is the best segment <laughs> in the show. You just okay? It is all right. Yeah, yeah all right. it is. <laughs> okay. Do you disagree? Uh, no, I'll take your word for it. Okay. I'm just listening to you talking, telling tell you about how much fun we're gonna have. So we're gonna have a lot waiting of fun. for that fun to happen. But okay. <laughs> Half of half the part of having fun is the build up, uh, the momentum. The yes. momentum that's what really does it. Yeah. So uh, two great albums to pick up. Definitely one's rock and roll. One is hip hop, but there's a connection. You know, I, I believe that hip hop is a new rock and roll in America. And you know, like I said, Bowie talking about being influenced by Kendrick. I was like, oh, that sounds cool. But when I listened to the record, I looked at the lyrics. It was true. It's all there in the making. And Kendrick, you know, also cited Bowie as an influence and was flattered that Bowie liked his music. And like I said, it's just it's just great. Um, both people giving you something worth listening to in different genres. And it's it's nice and it's refreshing because today with the music industry, so much stuff comes out and people get bombarded. So many records come out every week. And a lot of times, you know, back in the day, you could listen to something once or twice and be like, oh, I get it. I love it. I, I tell people now. Or I'm telling you right now, I definitely want to recommend a lot of times when you get a new record, new CD or a new MP3 download, uh, listen to it. If it doesn't click, come back to it. You know, get, listen to something three or four times and then make a decision because it could be that second or third time where you're like, oh, it clicked. You know, that's I mean, I, I have to do that. Yeah, I, I, I think most people have to do that. Not everybody. I, well, I don't know if they're doing of, it, but I think they should. Yeah. <laughs> Huh? But I, you know, me, I, if I'm going to sum up for you know what I think about Bowie, I'm someone who very passionate. I love Bowie. I really do. I love David Bowie. Um, I love who he is. I think that I, I'm one of those people that I, I got shaped up thanks to him. Cool. Whether it be from his music or even just his movie Labyrinth, which 
I knew you were going to say that. I think it's great that people, uh, some people know him from the movie first. I think that's awesome. And it's just such a great testament to I don't our... know about first, I, but I, oh, I think okay. that's definitely yeah, one. I don't make an assumption, excuse me. Yeah, no, I, for me, though, I mean, I, of course, you know, there's maybe that one person, but I think Bowie is, I, maybe if you, maybe you didn't know, maybe you heard about David Bowie himself through the movie first, but I'm, I'm sure you've heard his music before that. I mean, and maybe you're, you're kind of king registering those two together. But as someone that was really passionate about David Bowie, just and really crazy about him, one day we're going to have to do an episode dedicated to it. Oh, I'm down with that, man. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, I'm definitely down. I, I think if, you, if you're ready, if I listen to both of them. Listen to it several times to get into it. For me, Bowie's uh, Black Star album, it's something to listen to whenever I, when I'm, I'm a bit upset and I just I want to embrace it. I, I want to just be upset. And I, I think that's it's a good thing. It's it's a great thing. <laughs> you don't have to. Okay. Uh, and I'm not don't. saying that it's a bad thing. I'm complimenting it. It's because I really liked Bowie, and because I can't help but feel that you okay, know towards okay, the album. Okay. I mean, I don't. It's I, a beautiful record. It really right, is. Right. So. But it's not something. If you really did love Bowie, I, I can. I don't. I'm on the boat that it's hard to listen to it because you liked loved him. And this is a goodbye. And goodbye is definitely in the the tracks of this album. Okay. Okay. I can respect that. I don't Goodbyes feel like it's hard. Oh yeah, I don't feel like it's hard to listen to. I, I I like listening to it. I mean, is there some sadness because you know he's he's saying goodbye? Yes, there is. But once you get past that, you're just reminded of of how much of why you like him so much and why he's so important to the culture of music yeah. and rock and roll, but just the music in general because we need to have transcendent transcendent musical artists and he's one of them so the question will be will there be a new Bowie years to come or someone who can be in that field who transcends it all when it comes to the music because like I said David Bowie to me was one of those few artists whether you were black or white you know from baby boomers to generation X you knew he was I think my first memory of him was like this the song fame and then fashion and I knew about him but he didn't click for me till I heard let's dance yeah, I bought that record, and then I went back and backtracked all of his albums because of that. So you know, yeah, he's yeah, he will be missed. Rest in peace, and we will you know when we get a chance try to do a tribute to him because he's worthy of one. And, and getting back to Kendrick Lamar, uh, great MC, great new school rapper. I mean, he's yeah, he's amazing. For those of you who don't have it, Section Eighty. That's like his first full length record, I believe. And that's a really good album, too. That came out before on Good Kid, Mad City, before he got his deal with Aftermath Records. Kendrick likes to do concept records, which does, is yeah. nice to see, because there's only like a few rappers who actually follow that script. And, and he's one of them. You know, even less to actually pull that off, really, as, yeah. as well as Kendrick does. I, yeah. You know, as far as the Kendrick album, as you know, in the mood to listen to that. I, I'm actually I can listen to that a, a in a lot of record. different moods. I, I, it's a feel good record, yeah. but it, it is a feel good record. But also, yeah. it, it's very, it's thought provoking, and I think a yes. lot of his albums can be something that you can turn off your brain and just listen to, or really pay attention and just have some kind of amazing revelation about you so know like the best of both worlds. What, what you should saying. do in your life, or what you should eat dinner that night. I, it's <laughs> all right. There, yeah. I mean, it's it's it really is one of those things. It, I and that's I think that's what makes Kendrick amazing. I, you'd say the same thing about To Pimp a Butterfly. Good Kid, Mad City, Section 80. Yeah, yes. You, you can you can listen to it in a way that you can just have it as background music, or it can be in the forefront of your mind. Right. And either way, you're going to really enjoy it. I agree. Now, mind you, it's not typical hip-hop production, whatever that means, whether it's whatever trap sounding, means, yeah. boom bap, whatever. It's it's organic in the sense that you can tell he's got a, a studio musicians in the studio with him, and they're having fun. They're laying the funk. They're dropping. I mean, they're laying the bass. They're just doing it. Nice funky organ. It's got a real cool feel to it. He definitely seems like he definitely put a lot into doing this album that way, and it shows, and it's good. And I think even for some of those naysayers who don't like this record or didn't like to pimp a butterfly because they thought it wasn't hip hop enough. Whatever that means, I think. Who it's, says that, uh, uh, dude? I got a friend who's like that, but I'm not even. Yeah. Don't like I'll tell it. Tell you about yeah. that later, bro. Hate him. <laughs> no, uh, that's my boy, but he. Yeah, he's not he, mine. Yeah, he's. he's <laughs> you know, he, he, it's gonna take him some time. Yeah. I have to be patient with him. So, <laughs> but so, uh, yeah. Well, but like I said though, too, you know, for everybody, that happens to me. Sometimes you gotta put something down to come back to it, and then yeah. you're like a light bulb just pops on, you know, pops on. But it's definitely. A, a great album and this album might be an album that is like studied and reviewed later because of how it was presented to us do you think <laughs> that 
this would be your favorite Kendrick album so far? Drum roll. <laughs> What's with the drum roll, dude? <laughs> you just looked really uh, deep and thought, I feel like I'm going to get a great answer out of you. Uh, 